So if you thought that money was the only thing that people are motivated by, let's take a look at what Daniel Pink here has to say about what motivates people. Let's take a look at this. Let me give you an yeah, example of what I mean. Let me marshal the evidence here, because I'm not telling you a story. I'm making a case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Some evidence. Dan O'Reilly, one of the great economists of our time, he and three colleagues did a study of some MIT students. They gave these MIT students a bunch of games, games that involved creativity and motor skills and concentration. And they offered them for, for performance three levels of rewards. Small reward, medium reward, large reward. Okay? Do really well, you get the large reward on down. What happened? As long as the task involved only mechanical skill, bonuses worked as they would be expected. The higher the pay, the better the performance. Okay? But once the task called for even rudimentary cognitive skill, a larger reward led to poorer performance. Then they said, okay, let's see if there's any cultural bias here. Let's go to Madurai, India and test this. Reward, standard of living is lower in, in Madurai. A reward that's modest by North American standards is more meaningful there. Same deal. A bunch of games, three levels of rewards. What happens? People offered the medium level of rewards, did no better than people offered the small rewards. But this time, people offered the highest rewards. They did worst of all. Wow. In eight of the nine tasks we examined across three experiments, higher incentives led to worse performance. Is this some kind of touchy-feely socialist conspiracy going on here? <laughs> no, these are economists from MIT, from Carnegie Mellon, from the University of Chicago. And do you know who sponsored this research? The Federal Reserve Bank of the United States. That's the American experience. Let's go across the pond to the London School of Economics. LSE, London School of Economics, alma mater of 11 Nobel laureates in economics. Training ground for great economic thinkers like George Soros and Friedrich Hayek and Mick Jagger. Last <laughs> month, just last month, Economists at LSE looked at, at 51 studies of pay for performance plans inside of companies. Here's what the economists there said. We find that financial incentives can result in a negative impact on overall performance. There's a mismatch between what science knows and what business does. And what worries me as we stand here in the rubble of the economic collapse is that too many organizations are making their decisions, their, their, their policies about talent and people, based on assumptions that are outdated, unexamined, and rooted more in folklore than in science. And if we really want to get out of this economic mess, and if we really want high performance on those definitional tasks of the 21st century, the solution is not to do more of the wrong things to entice people with a sweeter carrot or threaten them with a sharper stick. We need a whole new approach. The good news about all this is that the scientists who've been studying motivation have given us this new approach. It's an approach built much more around intrinsic motivation, around the desire to do things because they matter, because we like it, because they're interesting, because they're part of something important. And to my mind, that new operating system for our businesses revolves around three elements, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Autonomy, the urge to direct our own lives. Mastery, the desire to get better and better at something that matters. And purpose, the yearning to do what we do in the service of something larger than ourselves. Wow, it's, that's profound stuff, profound research there that science and uh, what companies do, what they think is right, is wrong. Sometimes corporate America gets it wrong because they think corporate America, they don't think human. But science reveals the human behavior. So I can tell you this, from running a sales team of over 5,000 agents and being part of an organization of over 50,000 agents today, PHP Agency, I can tell you not everybody's driven by money. But I can tell you this, people want to serve a greater purpose. I'll give you an example. When we recruit people into the insurance industry, we recruit people to our company or our, our, our agency, one of the last things that uh, uh, people think of, there's a percentage of the last thing people think of is like, listen, I get the money. I know if I do the right thing, the money's gonna follow. A, uh, an early boss when I was coming out the Marine Corps, uh, a, a, a boss, was, I was working for this company called Metrex, the bodybuilding uh, pro, uh, metamycin protein company. And she, in my hiring interview, and as I was uh, becoming a salesperson for their company, she asked, Matt, what are you motivated by? Are you motivated by money or motivated by recognition? My answer, 
Recognition. I'm motivated by recognition. Why? Because if I do the right things, if my behavior rec- gives me recognition with the company, guess what will naturally follow? Money. And that's what I learned from the Marines. So if I'm tied to the higher purpose outside of just the money, the money is naturally going to follow if I follow the right behaviors. And the right behaviors is what we're incentivized to do. So if you're a CEO, you want to incentivize not just people making more money, but you want to incentivize the right behaviors. Go.